Well, Murray uh, enjoyed the sermon again yesterday, and you talked on a very difficult topic of following Jesus at a cost uh, that sometimes we're not comfortable with, and especially things like comfort, responsibility, and family. So before I ask you a few questions, I would love for you uh, just to kind of give us a summary of the sermon yesterday. Uh, Luke chapter 9, 57 through 62, uh, Jesus makes some pretty strong comments to three would-be disciples in which he challenges three important aspects, their comfort, social responsibility, and family. It says, if you're going to follow me as a disciple, you have to love me more than each of these. And that's a tough thing. Yeah, that's really hard. And we actually had a great conversation at staff meeting this morning about that. Uh, One of the questions brought up was, how do I kind of handle the responsibility where maybe I'm in a season of life where I feel called um, to spend more time with my family or my home over maybe other ministry opportunities. Yeah, like the specific example this morning was, what if responsibility at home takes me, means that I've got to put backyard bobble club or something like that on hold? I think the Bible is really clear, and we, we said this this morning, the Bible is really clear that our primary ministry responsibilities are to those uh, that Jesus has put right in front of us. And that often means if we're married, that means our spouse. If we have children, that means our kids uh, or those in our immediate circle. And so Jesus isn't telling us in this passage to abandon that. Nowhere in Scripture do we see that command. But rather, he says, uh, in relation to all of these other things, your love for those other things, when compared to your love for me, ought to look in some ways like hate. You ought to love me so much more than these other things that it looks like hate in comparison. Yeah, and I think with trying to balance those, we actually find more freedom in saying yes to Jesus over maybe other social responsibilities, like you said, comfort or family or finances. And so I would love to hear your thoughts more on how Jesus actually provides us more freedom when we decide that it's worth the cost to follow him. When my kids were really young, uh, they would ask the question, how much do you love me? And, you know, they would spread their arms as wide as they could spread them. Do you love me this much? And I would spread my arms, you know, even more than that. Oh, no, no, I love, I love you this much, this much more. And that much was so much more than their arms. Do you love me to infinity? Yes, I love you to infinity. Um, but then they would ask the question, what about, do you love me more than this? And they would do the comparison game. And they would ultimately sometimes come down to God. And I said, oh, no, I love the Lord more than you. And that's, uh, that at first is shocking to hear, but I think it's actually more comforting, uh, at least for a young child to hear, that their parent loves Jesus uh, much more than they even love their own children. And what that does is that provides a playground of sorts, if we think about it as a kid's perspective, for us to say, if we love Jesus this much, then these other things can take their proper place in our life. You as a child, as you're talking to your kid, can take your proper place in my life or you, this is my work or this is my hobby or this is my responsibility, can take its proper place in my life because love for Jesus leads the pack. Yeah. And that, you know, I think we could all agree with making the statement like, I love Jesus more uh, than my wife or my kids or my family. Uh, can be difficult, but you really encourage us towards the end there where you say, you know, Jesus is really our strength to make him ultimate. And so I'd love to hear you unpack that a little more on how Jesus really does equip us to choose him over all other things. Remember uh, our study in Nehemiah uh, where uh, it says the joy of the Lord is our strength. So what that means in the fullness of time when Christ came, the 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 motivation and enablement to follow him and to love him more than comfort, more than social responsibility, more than family comes from his love. So what that means is the more and more we meditate on the love of Christ that Christ has for us and pours into our hearts, much like we would take a cup of coffee and pour creamer into it more and more and more eventually the coffee would be replaced with nothing but creamer if we imagine our hearts being filled up with the love of Christ so that there's no more room for love in comparison for those other things um, then that's what strengthens and enables us it's it's reflecting on Christ's love for us what he did on the cross how he uh, came in humanity how he rose again on the third day and that requires just, you know, a, a, a lifetime of, 
of investigating that love and, and uh, reading his word and seeing his faithfulness to us over and over and over, even when we're unfaithful. And it's you know absolutely encouraged to know that everything God requires of us, he provides. Uh, and we find that in Jesus. And so, uh, Murray, thank you for taking time uh, to answer a few questions. Thank you for how the Lord used you yesterday to speak his truth. Uh, as always, we thank everyone who is worshiping here at Cabo Park, either uh, in person or at home. Uh, thank you for uh, your support.